Good evening, London. Good evening again. This is the Manish Tiwari Show, and we are in the most multicultural, multiracial global city in the world. We have a unique guest today, someone who has made London his home and has been here since 2015. He has launched an amazing venture, something to look out for in the coming days, years, and months to come. Uh, his name is Anuj Gupta. He is a serial entrepreneur. He had his first exit at the tender age of 20. He made his exit and he made his million at 20. And after that, he started his journey, entrepreneurial journey, which took him to New York, back to India, and now to London. Anuj, are you there? Yes. Hi, Manish. Hello, Anuj. So what a pleasure to have you here. You know, I, was, you. I always me. pride myself in living in this great city and meeting people like you, entrepreneurs, business people, visionaries, who, have, who bring all the difference to the city and to the world and make the city truly a global hub. So the feeling is mutual. Thank you, Anuj. So Anuj, we're going to start the show now, and I'm going to ask you some questions. My very first question is, Anuj, what made you an entrepreneur? You know, because Indians are typically straight-jacketed. Everyone I knew in my college days, in my school days, all they wanted to do was get a great job, get married to the girl, uh, you know, of their dreams, and live a happy, content life. <clears throat> very, very few, a very small percentage and a very thin percentage would try and go out and do an adventure uh, where they did not have any kind of uh, you know, idea of what's coming next. Uh, entrepreneur, in my view, are people who convert their adventures into ventures. They, knew, they know the risk they're taking, they control the risk, and they make something out of it. Very often they fail as well. Not everyone is a success story. And a small percentage like yourself you know, make it big, make it, uh, you know, take it a step further, a notch further. And unfortunately in India, and in, in the South Asian uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, South Asian population, I mean, even in this country, I don't see a very many, lot of them, uh, entrepreneur in the true sense. A lot of them have become business people, they're wedded to their businesses, and they have done well in life. They have enough number of doctors, accountants, and so on and so forth. But we are yet to see, uh, you know, uh, Microsoft or an Amazon or a Netflix being born out of uh, the South Asian genes. So Anuj, uh, we have great hope in you. My first question, what made you an entrepreneur at 20 straight out of college? <laughs> Manish, I think most people tip to through life. They tip through life and make a safety to death. And uh, I decided to become an entrepreneur and speed up that process. And, um, you know, entrepreneurs are born hungry, naked, and wet. And things only get more exciting. So for me, it's been, I, I said to myself one day, look, Anuj, you're anyway extinguished. May as well give a shot at becoming distinguished. <laughs> and uh, that was a start uh, to my journey. So, but I mean, what was the motivation at that age? You know, you straight out of college. Uh, most people would think, let me work for some time. Let me enjoy life. Uh, you know, let me kind of uh, think about what I want to do. You, did you have clarity? Did you know what you were going to do at that time? I think that would be an over, uh, that would be an oversized claim to say that I had clarity, but I think I definitely knew that um, in order to have a disproportionate contribution to community, I think we have to put a disproportionate amount of hard work. And I think that was, to me, the start of the journey where I said, the faster I find bigger gaps, the faster I find gaping holes and opportunities, I think quicker will come the chance to making something good and valuable and, and impactful. And I think, I think India needed to play the inside out card. India has been a services champion, whether you see large players like Infosys or TCS, they are used to taking the order request from an outsider and then fulfilling that. We wanted to be more inside out where we were not wanting to discount the value of our intellectual property. And I said, we have the capability and the agility and the humility to be building something which can be valuable to the world. So in the early days of the first business, we built an IP based business, which got its exit in the US at that time. But I think the motivation was that 
led to something which is going to be different and not the standard thing that the rest of the world, country has been doing. So, so, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, you had a business at 20, then you worked uh, with one of the tech companies and then you were in the US uh, and you came back and created Final Quadrant. Is that the name right? That's right. The, yeah, yeah. So I, the first company I created when I was in college and actually it was a company that was um, sending faxes internationally because there was a huge cost of sending faxes and India was primarily an exports regime in those days and we wanted to make it easier for people to communicate better through faxes um, in that time. And we exited that business. And then I traveled a lot when I was in my sabbatical. I traveled around the world. And then I came back and I saw gaps and opportunity in travel. And I built my company called Final Quadrant, which is actually making travel technology, which uh, ended up uh, powering companies like eBookers and became the first company in the world to be certified by Amadeus, and then ended up winning the award for the best technology in the world by Microsoft. OK, so uh, and, and Final Quadrant, then you created an exit for that as well. Along with eBookers, is that right? That's right. So, I sold the business in 2000, in, in, yeah, early 2000s yeah. to a company in the US, and then that gave me the opportunity of moving to the US and building the retail business that I built at that time, which was essentially we saw a gap uh, in the market where ethnic minorities and teens in the US were credit challenged and unbanked. Hmm. And the US was a classic story of either people being underbanked or overbanked. So yep. people didn't have access to the internet because they don't have access to credit cards and they couldn't do it. So they would walk into our retail, um, one of the retail outlets and get access to a variety of products mm -hmm. and be able to do what other people who had access to credit cards could do online. Mm -hmm. We are talking about 2005 kind of time, Manish, let's not forget that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think uh, it sounds like, uh, you know, an age of dinosaurs if you compare with what's happening right now. I mean, it's, things have moved so fast, so fast. So, uh, exactly. and, so, Anit, so that was prepay point, which you created in New York. And uh, after that, uh, you created an exit for that as well? That's right, that's right. And uh, we were uh, given a great opportunity. And I think uh, the idea in any opportunity is if the timing is right, then the timing is right. Mm -hmm. So we thought that uh, we've got enough of a footprint, enough of a printing on the landscape. It might be a good idea to uh, give it in um, uh, the right kind of hands and then move next. Okay. And subsequently, you went back to India and then at some point of time, you came to London. So what has been like the high point of your journey so far? I mean, you had uh, quite a few amazing things. I mean, you created exits. You were in India. I believe you were working with the Prime Minister's office in India as well. And then no, you, I, yeah. I did not, uh, you know, get into anything to do with politics actually. But okay. I mean, there may have been opportunities, but I think one didn't delve into those kind of things. Okay. Um, for me, Manish, it's not been one thing. I think it's been a basket of peaks and troughs. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's a collection of uh, episodes and events that have been the high point for me. I think pushing the envelope in the genre of uh, mm -hmm. disruptive paradigms has been really exciting to me. I think if you talk about single events, then you know winning the award for the squash championship okay. in All India University that was fascinating. I think coming on the cover page of a leading U.S. magazine saying "Made in India" was fascinating for me. I think it's it's just when I received a patent in my name. Mm -hmm. um, it was that was very fascinating so for me so i think it's a collection and there of course and i'm sure that i've made a ton of very large mistakes and i think they were high points as well mm -hmm. because they taught me something much bigger and better for a for for my future ahead but i think for me you know when my family tells me that they're proud of me mm -hmm. that's a high point for me and i think most importantly i would say when i wake up every morning mm -hmm. is a high point for me when i think about that i'm 24 hours better than i was yesterday wow I think that's a great philosophy to live by. I mean, uh, I wish all of us could think exactly the same way, you know, getting out and saying that this is 24 hours better than what I was last, you know, yesterday. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So Anuj, I'm going to ask you something uh, quite bluntly. I mean, have you made a lot of money in your journey so far? Uh, has that been a priority for you? I think for me, Manish, self-worth is more important to me than net worth. Yeah. Okay, and I think on the path of making money, I think it's quite easy to forget to value things that money cannot buy. So I believe that building human capital is way more important than physical capital. Mm -hmm. so, so priority for me has been uh, to have unique value contribution into whatever I do. 
and become an indispensable force in the thing that I'm doing. And then I allow rewards to smile on my efforts because I have at that point done my best. And I think money is something that starts to hurt, according to me, hmm. a negative margin utility beyond a point. I don't, I don't think I want the third spoon of sugar in my tea. It doesn't add any more value. Very well so said. I think having larger goals and I think having broader goals than being just you know, uh, myopically focused on one thing has not been that. But yes, uh, we've been blessed as far as uh, uh, you know, gains on the material side are concerned. Uh, life has been okay. Anuj, that's fantastic. I mean, I've never heard this one before. The third cup of sugar, uh, the third uh, spoon of sugar in my tea. Absolutely brilliant. I mean, you know, I think that's the right way to look at things. Yeah, you know, you can't excess doesn't uh, make anyone more successful. In fact, yeah. contentment is the way. One thing I've seen in you, I mean, I observe even now, uh, is that you have that kind of 100% focus and dedication to what you do. I mean, that's, that's kind of a hallmark of, a, uh, of someone who's going to make a difference. You know, you kind of committed to the task. They, they say that if you can't stand for something, then you will fall for anything. Yeah. So I, I believe in standing by and doing uh, with an acute focus hmm. on the mission. Hmm. Because if mission is not achieved, then justice is getting denied. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I, I see that, you know, and I was reading about it this morning that uh, when you're doing something, the only way to do it right is when you kind of burn 100% and kind of consume yourself in the process of doing it, uh, irrespective of what the outcome is. Uh, so I, I kind of totally, totally kind of see the spark in you. Uh, Anuj, so what made you move to London? What's your relationship with the city? I mean, you have been a globetrotter, you've been in New York City, you've been uh, in Delhi, in India, uh, in other parts of the world. So what made uh, you decide that London is going to be your home? I think I was uh, very happily packed up to be on my way to the US, to the Valley. And little did I realize that my plane's gonna land into London. I got invited by the um, UKTI, now the Department of Trade, um, and that got me to London, actually. And uh, it's been fascinating because London is such a massive uh, innovation hotbed. I think London's, London has the ecosystem maturity for businesses to allow them to witness to receive uh, the blessing of endorsement and success. So I think it's been, I think London has something for everyone and I think a lot for Green Van. Mm -hmm. so, so let's come to what, you know, because uh, I've seen this uh, huge billboards uh, in certain parts of the city. I think it was in one of those most prestigious locations. Uh, and then I've seen it in uh, Old Street, uh, uh, near the what we call uh, the silicon point roundabout yes yeah, silicon yeah. roundabout uh, so there's this huge poster of green van so what is the buzz about what really is green van and uh, you know when i was speaking to you you said it's going to be uh, another unicorn so what exactly this is and what's this venture all about uh manish green man is at, so it's a direct to consumer home services offering it allows, it's making really easy for the consumer to access and uh, um, find reliable and affordable tradesmen for their jobs. So think about um, movers, plumbers, electricians, locksmiths. I think there is a real challenge today. There is a real problem in the market. 94% of the market is totally fragmented. It's uh, moms and pops on one side and really expensive businesses on the other. The consumer is getting the rough end of the stick. We are not, we, we are, that's why we chose to not to be a marketplace, but a service provider in order to ensure the quality of service delivered. Because we want to stand by, we want to price, we want to become a principal party to the transaction and carrying the promise. I think the use of technology that we have in Green Van, along with the green assets, has a huge impact on the stakeholders and especially the environment. So I think consumers today save a lot of time they save, they get predictability, they get visibility, reliability, um, uh, recoursability. So it's, it's great for the consumers and even for the tradesmen who today have basic levels of income. And for them, it's going to be fantastic because they're going to reduce the number of days they work in a year. They're going to make much more money than they make today. And they're going to have a more safe and a predictable revenue stream for themselves 
and giving them much more high quality family time. I think for us, it is a combination of those factors on the back of the use of technology that enhances the value prop for various members of the ecosystem. It upgrades industry credit rating, it improves the possibility of um, decarbonizing cities because you know we're using uh, um, uh, green assets. So I think uh, for us at Green Van, we would like to be a part of the design of the wallpaper of your mind. So when you think about home services, you think about Green Van, there doesn't exist a solid, ready, recallable brand, and we would like to occupy that spot. So is it a bit like the Uber? Uh, kind of services for the home, uh, you know, anything related to the home services? Is it like the Uber for that? Is this what you have? So if you think about Uber, Uber is uh, a combination of sharing economy, informal economy, and continuum economy, yes. To the extent that we are like Uber because we, we deliver the service. So when you take a ride from A to B, you don't say I actually went with, um, you know, the driver partner of Uber, John, right? You say that I went with Uber. So when we're going to do the jobs, the jobs are going to be done by Green Van. So we are uh, an Uber of home services. We are aggregating demand and putting together supply and delivering a high quality service, which is through a smooth connective tissue and really making it e easy for various members of the ecosystem. So and, and the driving technology which you have, I mean, uh, you said the AI, so artificial intelligence. So you, have you kind of developed this? Uh, uh, is it all ready to go? I mean, are you already delivering uh, on, the, uh, on the services? Yeah, so I mean, you know, in our thinking, internet created companies like Amazon and mobility created companies like Uber. And I think come, the, the time has come when artificial intelligence is going to create companies like Green Van. Because I think the bottleneck between the seeker and the provider has been the human who sits and take the takes the requirements. I think that the idea to automate that piece of the top of the funnel is important that allows us to create a scalable, reliable, and an available solution. So AI, with its capability that it has today of you know natural language processing and machine learning, allows for a very stable and a scalable solution to allow consumers to take services from us. So yes, AI becomes really important. It's not just AI. We use algorithms and lots of automation along with AI in making the journey much smoother, much lighter, and with much less fat. Brilliant. So it's, it's a combination that makes the platform really easy. It's not just the one thing. Sure. So I was listening today, uh, you know, I was watching uh, but Sharad Sharma, he, he runs a thing called I Spirit India. And I was just kind of listening to him and he was talking about uh, how in the global, scene, uh, global scheme of things, uh, India still has not created any products. Uh, I mean, in the, in the sense that, you know, of course you have companies like TCS or Infosys, and of course the Tatas exist and they've acquired things like JLR. But truly, in terms of products, we don't have anything to talk about. We have not created or we have not given the world any groundbreaking product. Uh, smaller countries like Korea, Japan, uh, Israel, uh, and of course all the uh, Western nations, they all have kind of, uh, you know, uh, year after year uh, created an economy uh, which is based on these kind of products. Uh, so. Uh, China, I mean, China is another example which started uh, much later uh, and then has got Huawei, uh, you know, this 5G giant, uh, which is now causing, uh, you know, a fear among the Western nations because they're so advanced in terms of uh, 5G and its understanding of uh, mobile technology. So where do you think India has kind of lapsed and are you going to be, I mean, as I really hope, are you going to be kind of the first unicorn uh, for India, because this sounds exciting. I don't see anyone else doing what exactly you're doing, and I'm pretty sure this is scalable. You can take it anywhere in the world. So, Anuj, what do you think? What's your dream? Uh, is it going to be on the FTSE 100? Is this your kind of that venture which is going to kind of create that mark? I think to answer your first question first, I think why India has not created products, I think it's rooted deeply into the lack of credit and lack of capital because it doesn't allow people to take chances it doesn't allow people to take risks a single mistake is your final mistake 
availability of capital in the West has been the reason for people to learn along their journey, make a few mistakes, and then go for the moonshots. It's those moonshots, it's, the, it's those tectonic jumps mm -hmm. where you can have, when you can move many miles after learning from your mistakes, but you don't get flushed out as a business, is why we believe entrepreneurs witness success. So capital availability and ability to absorb shocks and risk is a very key, um, uh, you know, hand in hand partner of why entrepreneurs also become successful. I mean, it's humanly impossible to not make mistakes. But I think if a mistake costs you a business, then it's your, you're done. And I think in India, because of paucity of capital, I think that's been a major challenge. Um, I think as, as far as Greenman is concerned, with an opportunity size of 700 billion, most markets being fragmented, AI not being used properly today, this being a need-based business versus a want-based business, we are solving a real problem. Um, there is a real gap. There doesn't exist a recallable brand out there today. We do have the opportunity, I believe, to witness uh, quite a large amount of highs in this journey. So, so there's a huge opportunity and this can fill that gap. I mean, yes. Yeah, brilliant. So, you know, uh, yeah, uh, what you're saying about the Indian scenario, I think there, the, what you said is there's, there's a lot of truth in that. I mean, we are far too critical. I mean, look at, I'm not kind of, uh, you know, uh, saying that they've not made mistakes, but look at the attitude which uh, India, you know, Indian media and the, even the, the political uh, system has towards people who have failed. I mean, Vijay Malia, he might have failed, but wasn't he trying to be an entrepreneur? I mean, he did not kind of, he did create the best airline for a, even for a short time. But I think we are a bit too overtly critical. And I, I see that in a lot of this different industries, we only have a handful of Narayan Murthy's, but even then, you know, the, the examples we have of, uh, of failures have been blown out. So definitely there's a point we are far too critical. Uh, I, I think the point is that they say that if you want to walk fast, walk alone. If you want to walk far, walk together. I think as an entrepreneur and as a part of the entrepreneurial community, I think it's important to hold each other down and lift each other up. And I think uh, it, it's the mantra that I live with. Mm -hmm. No, brilliant. Uh, and it's so, you know, all the best uh, for Green Van. Uh, there, there's a huge market space. Uh, you definitely uh, kind of can uh, scale it up, make it global. Uh, but uh, I believe right now your vision is to focus on London. That's right. I think London is a market large enough, mm -hmm. and we don't want to, uh, uh, you know, fly before we run. And I think um, a market of this size, I think, is a good enough market for us to the levels we desire to be at. It's it's got the volumes, it's got the depth. We will first justify this gap before we move next. People were asking questions about you, and they were asking me questions about Green Man. So that's a good start. Uh, I had. You know, I read a few days back, uh, the Prime Minister uh, launched something called a green economy. You know, he has uh, something called the green vision. So I was going to ask you, what is this green vision and why is it so important? Is that going to be at the heart of green van as well? Because I see this kind of connect, a green van, uh, you know, the timing is perfect. The Prime Minister has announced and unfurled a uh, big boost, billions and billions of pounds into the green economy. And when I read that, uh, my first instinct was, why I'm not doing something which taps into this great opportunity? I mean, this absolutely is going to change how United Kingdom will move into certain areas. Uh, you know, we all know that uh, petrol and diesel cars are going to be obsolete in the next decade or so. Uh, we know that uh, you know electric cars are the way forward. We know that uh, certain things are going to be taxed so heavily that people would have no option but to turn to green and cleaner uh, energy sources. And green when is is that kind of in the same direction? Is that vision uh, important to you? What's your you know what is the connect here? What is at the heart of it? I think that's a great question. I think, Manish, for me, wherever I may go, I cannot forget where I come from. As a child who was raised in India, we were told early on, 
Mother Earth is very important. So we used to pray to Mother Earth. So I think I'm already 15 years late in my endeavors in pushing the agenda for the, for the planet. We, we don't want the planet to start having a problem with the people. I think already enough has been done and you don't want to cha challenge the planet anymore. So I think uh, at Green Van, it's, it's not just an agenda. It's just not, it's, it's a very cardinal way of thinking for us. I think it's at the, it's at the heart of affairs uh, for Green Van. We cannot even quantify the amount that we owe to the planet. I think our planet is giving us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. We need to do something back for the planet. So I think, the, and it was fantastic to see uh, Prime Minister's 10-point plan on, I think history is getting created because of the green industrial revolution that the Prime Minister has talked about. And I think that creates something for everybody in the sustainable space, but I think a lot for Green Van. I think we want to take this opportunity in ensuring that the world is, world is becoming, the UK to start with, uh, cleaner and better and swifter on the back of better practices. And you did say something to me about planting trees. Is that uh, kind of, how's that linked to Green Van? I mean... Uh... I, I think so for us, the agenda is not... So if you think about um, in Green Van, I think the entire process, right from the time the customer comes in, we don't expect... Um, uh, we encourage working from home for our people who work with us. So they don't have to come in resource-heavy cars to a resource-heavy office. You know, the process is very light. The consumer comes in, they don't have to uh, make phone calls and waste a lot of their time. So we're reducing, we're using electric vans. We are delivering more jobs driven, more jobs delivered per mile. So if you think about our jobs to mile ratio is much more compared to most other people. If you think about the fact that we are, there is no room for any um, mistakes because we are using directly electric vans. So we are decarbonizing the city straight up. I mean, we're not what they call these days greenwashing. We're not, uh, you know, it's just a straight use of direct green assets. And I think, so for us, and as far as, you know, when somebody gets a job done, we issue something called the Karma Card, to your point. Mm -hmm. And the Karma Card is actually making the consumer feel that they've been a part of the green economy because many people are in jobs which are different in nature. We want everybody to be a part of this green revolution, the green economy, the green feeling, and the green blessing. So we issue them the Karma Card, and that card is actually telling them that their job that they got done with us made us plant a tree in some part of the world, and it's a positive action from our side towards afforestation. And not only did it create work for a family in some part of the world, but also they became a part of the afforestation process. So it's a great feeling of give back to our, cons to our customers who otherwise would have just uh, not been a part of this green effort. So, so from, a, from a green man perspective, I think there is ecology and that balance and our giving back sits at the uh, heart of our business model. So basically, uh, you said something about three T's. So it's trees, technology, and what was the third, third T about? Trust. 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 I mean, oh. you know, our goal is to actually drive, not only be green, but become dark green. So we are trying to do many things. Mm -hmm. And we are saying that our, you know, trust technology and trees, as trust is where the consumers can trust us, and technology because we use the latest and the greatest, and trees because we have this major drive towards green and mm -hmm. afforestation and decarbonization. So we are not only hope we are not only climate neutral, but we hope to be climate positive. So, and where do you plant these trees? I mean, uh, is that going to be some other part of the world, uh, or in the UK or uh, India? I was just, in fact, uh, on a call a couple of days ago with somebody who said there's going to be there is a major drive in the UK, and I think also part of the Prime Minister's agenda, if I'm not wrong, because I haven't looked at it in great detail, but I believe they're going to be putting together areas which are going to become areas capable of afforestation. So, I mean, of course, if it comes to the UK, this would be our destination of choice in putting the trees. Until then, we, of course, have other options, and we are doing things like we are finding spots wherever we could do, which delivers maximum value to the planet. So we are excited to see uh, parts of the UK come up with that effort and, you know, uh, put our two cents into afforesting the system. No, that's great. I mean, that's, uh, that's a great concept. Uh, I hope to get the karma card from you once I become your customer. Uh, Anuj, moving on, uh, you know, one of the critical things uh, which United Kingdom and 
I, I believe all the big economies right now, including the United States and, uh, you know, of course, Asia, faces um, lack of jobs. You know, the pandemic mm -hmm. has created that, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people are feeling that they, technology is going to drive them out of their jobs. So earlier it was technology as a scare. I mean, you know, it, it kind of... Uh, changed the nature of many, many traditional industries. Uh, and then combine that with pandemic, which is kind of making certain things, you know, you know, you, you possibly, uh, some people don't have uh, jobs because, mm -hmm. you know, there, there's no need uh, in the current scenario. So th there's a, and, and there, there was a report saying that up to a million jobs would be lost or have been lost rather. Uh, mm -hmm. in, in the last few months and, the, the, you know, the Chancellor, uh, Rishi Sunak, he, he's thinking hard as to how to revive these jobs, you know, and you have this kickstart scheme. So my question to you is that, you know, and this was like some time back, like, I mean, I started using Uber maybe four or five years. I mean, I was a late adopter, uh, you know, uh, four maybe even later. So once uh, I used to speak to uh, the guys who were driving uh, and sometimes I used to take the black cab and uh, there was always this kind of um, disdain towards uh, Uber. Uh, you know, I remember I was standing outside this uh, hotel, uh, uh, 51 Buckingham Gate and uh, actually had called an Uber. And suddenly I was kind of, uh, I must be like, uh, I saw a car coming and I kind of waved and there was a black cab which stopped. And the black cab guy thought maybe I was hailing him uh, uh, for the service, but it was actually the Uber which was behind that. Uh, and he really got furious. I mean, he said that, look, they're taking away our jobs. And he started kind of almost, uh, you know, uh, on the spot, he started kind of uh, uh, screaming at me. So I was like, I felt really bad. And I thought that, look, I mean, all things are not good. I mean, technology in the end, is also taking away some of these livelihoods, uh, some of the old ways of living. So I, I had that little guilt about uh, using Uber excessively. In fact, I make it a point sometimes that when I'm in the heart of the city, I sometimes take black caps because uh, you know I just I just don't want them to be out of business. So that that's my story. But uh, the point I was trying to make here was. Uh, would a lot of people lose jobs uh, like it happened with the PCOs and black cabs uh, with the you know Uber revolution? Uh, will what you're doing, will that not drive uh, certain people who are like local handymen, uh, local electrician, plumbers uh, out of jobs? Right. I think, I think that's a very, very interesting and a great question, Manish. I think the diametric opposite is going to happen. I think we can create we will create thousands of jobs. And I'll explain this to you why. It's a very logical reason. It's not a figment of my imagination. There is full logicality behind what I'm trying to say. If you think about the value proposition that we're going to create for the customer, make it, making it really easy for the customer, making it really reliable for the customer, making it very predictable for the customer, very visible, um, affordable. Mm -hmm. So customers are going to rely more on accessing an affordable professional rather than doing it themselves. OK? Okay. Because they're going to rely on an affordable professional, they're going to rely on companies like Green Van. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Number of transactions needed in the market are going to move up. Mm -hmm. the number of transactions needed in the market are going to move up. You will need more tradesmen. Today, the DIY market, the do-it-yourself market, is a very large market because either it's too expensive for the customer or it's too unreliable. There doesn't sit a middle player who's affordable and accessible and reliable. Okay, and Green Man is trying to come in that spot where which appeals to 90% of the market. The very large and the very expensive players only appeal to the very up market, which is 1%, and is not exciting for everybody else. The fragmented players are too unreliable for mo most customers for them to become vendors of choice. So when we come in, we shift the DIY market. We also create new types of transactions. Today, for example, look at if you look at our moving service. Today on second-hand marketplaces like eBay, like uh, Gumtree, like, you know, many other Facebook marketplaces, transaction velocity is could be much, much higher. You are able to sell stuff that's sitting in your house that couldn't be sold today because of the cost of logistics. When we reduce the cost of logistics, you are able to sell that stuff. And that stuff is getting sold, it needs to be moved. There's a new transaction that's been created again. 
you you have a house with two rooms one house, one room is used for storage i ask Arif, i can make you empty that room and send the stuff to storage because it's really cheap to send it to storage we create new space you can rent it out on airbnb have an additional revenue stream so right from making it really easy for the customer having a solid value proposition for the customer um to increasing the number of transactions moving the diy market creating new type of transactions we are hoping and to the fact that we increase the income of the tradesman by 50% and the disposable income by 4 to 5x we feel that it will become a profession of choice people young people coming out of uh, colleges young people coming out of uh, you know will want to opt in to be these kind of tradesmen because it offers them a much more lucrative um, opportunity mm-hmm. instead of let's say 20000 pounds they want they'll make 30000 pounds mm-hmm. that suddenly changes their options basket mm-hmm. and and you know we feel that uh, at higher income levels and much more opportunity or more transactions should create um hundreds and thousands of new jobs in this market so i think this is business for good is in our clear understanding so velocity in an industry when it improves it increases the number of jobs and i'm sure uh, i haven't looked at this data myself but i think if you look at uber with uber coming into the london market and the uk market the number of rides would have gone up and gone down Mm-hmm. So sure. yeah. we, we don't know how the shift is going to be, but I think more drivers are going to be needed than less. More tradesmen are going to be needed, needed than less. More transactions are going to be done than less, and that is really what we can hope for as a business. Okay, no, absolutely great. I mean, I do feel that there's a need gap because it's not that easy. It, it might sound like, but it's not that easy to get a good plumber, electrician, uh, or if your boiler breaks on, it's not that easy. And I've personally faced issues. Uh, because you would not get them so easily unless uh, you have an existing relationship. You know, it's not that easy that you go on Google and you get it at the click of a button. And I think what you're doing is is definitely uh, bridging that need gap. Uh, and of course, and I, and I think to your point, Manish, I want to say this: like we would like to turn the customer from an order maker. Mm-hmm. from an order taker into an order maker today the customer is an order taker he's mm-hmm. been told and dictated the terms by the tradesman mm-hmm. and i think because tradesmen also are having a hard time because of lack of visibility we are going to turn the customer into an order maker and he's going to be given the flexibility on the day the customer wants the work to be done the time the customer wants to be the work to be done so they can actually go to their office some people want it in the daytime some people want late in the afternoon mm-hmm. everybody different we would we would be able to cater to those bespoke requirements on the back of a sophisticated platform no i think that's that's simply great and the number of young people who can come out of vocational courses and get straight into the economy and start earning for themselves. So, I mean, this is our ready-made platform. Uh, they don't yeah. need to set up their own Even shop. Even the Kickstarter application, we applied for a large number of applicants on that because we do see uh, hope in creating some amount of employment um, through that as well. I mean, I think that's that's it's a it's a fascinating situation where hopefully we can contribute onto the chancellor's uh, big dream of uh, uh, re-employing back a good part of the economy. Brilliant. So, Anand, so you know, uh, I was waiting to ask this question, but uh, I think maybe this is the right time. So who are your role models? You know, uh, the kind of people you met and said, wow, I met this person or, uh, I, you know, I need to be, uh, I'm my trade, you know, my trajectory needs to be like him. I think, you know, for me, the universe, the universal force is my biggest hero. Yeah. And I think it's not, there is the one thing that, you know, leaders and very successful people I have seen and have in common is their disproportionate amount of hard work to create creating disproportionate amount of contribution to society and community. I, you know, and I, I think it's a mixture of people's different skills and their qualities and their capabilities, which has been really like impressive for me to notice and to imbibe to the extent that I could. I mean, if you talk about individuals, um, meeting Jeff Bezos has been fantastic. I think he's a great example of huge vision and even very penetrative micro execution. I think meeting uh, the Duchess of Cambridge at a, a smallish public event where we, we could have a, a conversation um, with her and Prince, um, I realized that it's really fascinating to see how they take pleasure in making lives of other people comfortable, yeah. you know? And then, you know, even Sir Richard Branson, who I met uh, uh, in a restaurant where I was uh, 
uh, you know, a few years ago, and we ended up having a great conversation. And I could see, I mean, he's an, an iconic hero of innovation and a very uh, interesting consumer first mindset. So it, it's different people with different uh, qualities that I've admired, and I believe that there is something uh, to be seen and taken and imbibed and absorbed and executed uh, from those qualities in becoming a, a better version of ourselves. So what would be your advice uh, to young entrepreneurs in the city? I mean, I meet loads of people, lots of young people, uh, mm. and, and the city has that buzz. Uh, and uh, especially I'll meet a lot of kids from uh, BAME backgrounds, from black, Asian, minority, ethnic backgrounds. Uh, and, you know, a lot of them uh, want to do something, uh, but uh, they, they seem to be kind of, you know, because they don't come from the right backgrounds. I mean, not everyone goes to Eton or, you know, uh, has had the privilege of studying in the right places or moving around the right circles. Uh, you have broken through the glass ceiling. What would be your advice uh, to young people in the city who want to make it big, who want to become entrepreneurs? So Manish, I think that's a left-handed question because you're clearly telling me that I'm not young. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, uh, you know, to the extent that I can say, I think I would say it's better to aim high and fail than to aim low and succeed. I think checking yourself every day makes you 365 times better than you were a year ago. I think it's important to feed back yourself about yourself every day. And uh, timing is key. I mean, look, timing is absolutely key because there is a famous line that I think about, I think, which is intelligence is nothing but an entertaining layer of froth. Mm -hmm. So intelligence is nothing but an entertaining layer of froth that dances in and out of the celestial bodies that dominate us. Anuj, I'll have to record that and play it in my head because I'm going to use that line next time. <laughs> you, and I think it's a great line because, you know, everything is about timing because uh, what is ahead of time is too early and what is later than its time is too late. So I, I, I feel that way. But I think if you work hard enough as, as an entrepreneur, even supply can create demand. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think that's the determination I think people need to have. You can't... Um, I think also you can't discount the value of partnerships and collaboration and association. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really important because I think if you're not all out, you're all doubt. Mm -hmm. So you have to be all out, otherwise the world's not going to let you survive because there are too many doubters out there. So I think while we're busy building all kinds of things, it's important to have time for the most important things. Share, 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 collaborate, 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 let wisdom viral. Wisdom has to viral, it has to go through many people, and I think sharing only gets us more of what we need. So I, I would say if you meditate for 10 minutes a day, if you're busy, meditate if you meditate 40 minutes a day if you're really busy. So, so I think for the young entrepreneurs, uh, try and create that depth in your head because they say the most amount of um, distance you will travel is the distance between your ears. Wow. So, and I think, so it's, it's uh, my advice is uh, uh, be be uh, driven and give your purpose uh, the value, and you will get the value from the purpose. So, so I think that's what I am driven by, Manish. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's a great great takeaway. So you said determination, aiming really high, and creating partnerships and collaborations. I mean, you know. I, I can't imagine anyone who will fail, even if you, I mean, if you manage to do these three things, aim high, det be determined, and create partnerships. And I think the last line which you said absolutely is, is kind of, uh, you know, sums it all. The greatest distance you'll travel is between your two ears, you know, the, this part of your uh, ex anatomy has everything. And if, if yeah. you go into there, you possibly can get anywhere. So, uh, Anuj, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we're going to, uh, we literally have maybe one minute left. So, you know, the show is coming to an end. It was absolutely a pleasure to have you here. What I was going to say uh, towards the closure is that we've seen more things change in last one year because of the pandemic than we've seen in a decade. Like, you know, what could have happened in the next 10 years has happened in this one year. I mean, this is a year of cataclysmic change. You know, it, life's have been turned around. So what do you think the world will look like in the next 10 years? I mean, I don't know if we all will be there. Hopefully we'll all be there. We'll survive through this and we'll <laughs> ride, the, ride the wave. But what do you think the world will look like uh, in a decade or so? 
I think with that logic of yours of mathematical extrapolation, I think in the next one decade, we're going to be 10 decades ahead. Wow. But I think the point is that, you know, there are theories around capitalism is crashing and uh, democracy is degrading and uh, climate is breaking and, uh, you know, inequality is rising and protests are permeating. But I think my feeling is that I think what waits for us is a much better tomorrow, is a much safer tomorrow. I think the speed to success is going to multiply. I think it's going to change by orders of magnitude. Intelligence of today is going to become the common sense of tomorrow. I think luxuries of today are going to become basics of tomorrow. And I think strugglers of today are going to become heroes of tomorrow. Oh, thank you, Anand. So, it's, it's, it was an absolute pleasure to have you here. Uh, what, you, what you kind of, you know, the vision you have uh, would be uh, really uh, kind of, I would say, uh, a 20 minute crash course in what one should be focusing on. Uh, all the best for your venture, uh, or rather adventure, uh, which is called Green Van. And uh, I hope uh, that it becomes a huge success. And we see that as the wallpaper in every household uh, in, in London to begin with, in the United Kingdom, and hopefully across the world. And I hope it becomes the unicorn or the, uh, or the dream venture which you have envisioned. So Anuj, so we're going to come to the end of the show. Thank you so much for being here and being a part of this great city. Thank you for being part of the Manish Tiwari Show. Thank you very much, Manish, for having me. And we hope to give our participants and ecosystem members a good journey year on year. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. So viewers, we had a great time with Anuj. Watch me again next Saturday, same time on the Manish Tiwari Show. Thank you.